What you doing, Dylan? Uh, put some tanks together. No. New tanks, new tanks. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. I'm back here in our workshop and if you can't tell, we got a slew of new tanks in. We're actually getting the valve set up for them now. And that's what Dylan's going, he's going through and he's setting the dip tube or getting the dip tube attached to the valve. So when you get a brand new valve, as you can see here, the dip tube comes separate and all he's got to do is put it in, torque it down, and then we, of course we can put it in the tank. But before we do that, even though these tanks are brand spanking new, we still have to do a visual inspection on them. So we're going to go through our 18 step protocol with every single one of these tanks, do a standard visual inspection on it. Then we're going to put the valves in it, get them tightened up where they need to be. And then of course get these tanks filled. But I want to kind of walk you through the process of what we do when we get a new tank and why we do it that way. And hopefully it'll give you a better understanding of when you go to your local dive center to purchase a new tank, why that shop does certain things the way they do it. So guys, the first thing that we do is just go ahead and inspect the valve, make sure everything's good with the valve. Uh, we just open and close it. As you see, these are actually the Vindicator valves, so they got a little plastic uh, wrap around them that goes on the inside here. And when you turn it on, the green, the red kind of goes back up in it, the green pops out, and it can just kind of let you know that the tank's turned on if you're on a boat or something like that. Here, Dylan's just going to put in the dip tube. He's going to give it just a little bit of torque, just to make sure it's up in there nice and tight. And then of course he's just going to do an overall inspection of the threads, make sure everything's good. Everything that we would do for an annual inspection, we do it from the get-go as well. And then he's going to put a little bit of silicone grease on the threading. And then that valve is going to be good to go. I'll show you one more here. And when we order tanks, guys, we get all different types of valves. These are just standard Vindicator Pro-K valves. I believe these are the thermo valves. Yep, these are the thermos. Um, very popular brand. It's from XS Scuba. We personally like them. Now, if we're going to be doing side mount or back mounted doubles, we'll get ones that either have longer posts on the side. And what I mean by that is longer posts here. Or we will get one with a manifolded system. You just put a little bit of silicone there. And then once we get the rest of these done, we will move on to the visual inspection of the cylinder themselves. We'll get the valves installed, and then of course we will show you pumping them up. All right, so now that we've got all the valves done, as you can see, we've got quite a few here. We've got some of the Vindicators, we've got standard thermo valves here. These standard thermos are for two pony systems. We've got a 30 here that we're gonna be doing. We also got a brand new 40 that we're gonna be doing. Uh, but we're just going to do a typical visual inspection. Anything that we would do yearly for a customer, that's what we're going to do on these new cylinders as well. Unfortunately, sometimes when you get new cylinders, they're still going to have some type of defect. So what Dylan's doing now is he's just doing an overall external visual inspection. He's looking for any bowels or any defects in the manufacturing process. Um, we're going to be looking down in the tank here shortly. He's also going to be checking all the threads. And when we check the threads, we're looking, looking for any uh, sustained load crack in here in the threads. Um, and I don't suspect any new valve having any issues. But once again, you never know. These are man-made products. They can tear up even at the manufacturing stage. But we use a 18-step protocol here. Dylan's going to show it to us. This is what we do on every single visual inspection. Now, the only difference that we're going to be doing with these that we wouldn't or that we would typically do on a normal tank is we're not going to be logging this information unless we find a defect or a problem with it, simply because these are brand new tanks. Um, some will be getting inspection stickers, some will not. The ones that's already been purchased, we'll go ahead and throw inspection stickers on for them and uh, send them on their way. The ones that's going to be for sale on the sales floor, they will not get visual inspection stickers until that customer buys them. Um, so, And we will still do another external uh, inspection on them when that time comes, but we're not going to go ahead and stick a sticker on them until then. That's pretty much a waste of a sticker. 
But he's going to go through, he's going to check the threads now. He's looking for any type of sustained load cracking that could have been occurred during, say, that manufacturing process. And typically that doesn't occur during that time frame. It occurs whenever you fill a cylinder. Um, but we believe in thoroughness, and so that's what we're doing. He's going to go through, he's going to check every single one from the top all the way to the bottom. And like I said, if he does find a problem, then of course we will go through and log that down. All right, so now what he's doing, he's looking down internally into the tank, just looking for any moisture that maybe would have got in there from condensation from shipment or when the tank was manufactured itself and was cleaned out. And we'll see if he'll let us look down in there. See if we can see what it looks like. Nice, clean, shiny. I don't see any type of corrosion or any water spots. And we shouldn't. These are brand new tanks. But once again, we believe in thoroughness. And so we do this with every single tank that comes through the door um, when it's brand new or if it's time for an inspection. Now he's going to be installing the valve. And you'll notice this is just a standard thermo valve. This one's not a uh, Vindicator valve. It's just a standard on and off. It is a Pro K valve. So for the guys that like DIN, you just pop the insert out and you got a DIN valve. If you like yoke, you screw the insert back in. Just about all our brand new tanks, we always put a Pro K valve in it just so that uh, you as the diver or the customer would have a wide range of uh, choices to go with there. Well, one cool thing about a, a valve, they don't have to be very tight. Basically, all we're going to do is screw it in hand tight. He's going to give it a little bit of love and care. So he's going to take the wrench. He's going to put it on the flat spot there around the base of it. He's going to tighten it down and just give it a little tiny love tap. That's all it really takes, guys. Those O-rings seal very well when you put pressure behind them. And so that's about all you have to do to it. So that one will actually get a sticker here shortly, and we will uh, throw the air to it. But we've got several more to jump through, and then we'll show you the filling process. All right, guys, so now that i got all the uh, tanks ready to be filled, I've actually already filled a couple. I want to show you real quick, this is a separate compressor system than what you guys are used to seeing. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to fill cylinders and how we do it. And I want to show you a benefit to having a compressor system like this. So in short, this one has four cascade systems, and it's also got an option to fill directly from a compressor. And all you've got to do is just flip this little switch, and it gives you the option to fill from, say, bank cylinders or cascade systems over to a compressor. Some people say, well, which one's better? Well, it really depends. Typically, we always want to feel from the cascade systems. It makes the process a little bit more smoother, a little bit faster. However, if there comes a time where the cascades are nearly empty and the compressor's running to fill them up, we can switch over to compressor and we can actually feel the cylinders from the compressor while the compressor is actually filling the cascade system as well. But just to show you, this is the compressor system here. You got an intake back here in the back. We got all our filter systems over here. And what that does is that compressor will actually fill up these cascade bottles back here. We have four cascade systems here. They're high pressure 6,000 PSI bottles. And so we can actually fill from those. Now I just finished up this tank here. I'm actually gonna swap the uh, fill adapter over to the next one. I'm gonna show you how we do a single fill. Then I'll actually show you how we do a multiple cylinder fill by using these sleeves in here. And one of the benefits to that is, is if you say have an empty cylinder like we've got here and you've got a semi full cylinder or a half filled cylinder, you can actually balance the two out by putting them in, equalizing them out and then you can fill the tanks equally and not have to do them one at a time as I'm starting here. But just to show you real quick all I do, let me go ahead and take the fill whip off of this cylinder. So I'm gonna cut the fill whip off, I'm gonna cut the cylinder off, and you'll also notice we still have the plastic on these tanks, and that, that's because I wanna protect these tanks from getting too scratched up. You can see used cylinders, they tend to get scratched up. It doesn't really damage the tank, just cosmetically doesn't really look that good. For the customers who buy brand new tanks, we try to keep the plastic on them until that customer comes and picks it up. But now that I've got the cylinder and the fill whip shut off, I'm going to bleed the system out. That's going to allow me to release the fill whip. It's just like your first stage on your uh, regulator. You have to bleed it out before you can take it off the tank. So I'm going to slide it off. I'm going to slide it over here to the next cylinder and get it screwed on. And one of the mistakes I see a lot of new fill operators do is they really tighten this down. You literally just got to turn it till it stops like that. I'm going to start with the cylinder side first, so I'm going to open it up. You can really see the Vindicator valves now. You'll see that little red sleeve goes away and now it turns green. 
whenever it's open. That's basically the purpose of that. It kind of lets you know if the valve's open. And then we're going to come over here to the fill whip. I'm going to slowly open it up. What that's doing is transferring all the air that's in the fill whip over into the tank. And it's basically balancing that out. Now, as far as a pressure gauge to know what's going in the tank, I'm going to be using that fill pressure gauge right there. So once I've got it open, I'm going to come over to my bank system and I'm going to start on bank number one. You'll see bank one right now has about 2,400 PSI in it. Bank two's got about 5,100. Bank three's got about 56. And then bank four also has got about 56. So the cool thing about a cascade system is I can utilize all the air that's in storage and slowly fill these tanks, making sure that I get a good, accurate fill without the tanks getting too hot. So I'm going to start slowly opening up bank one here. So basically I'm transferring the air to bank one to my fill regulator. The fill regulator is going to go through the fill whip and it's going to go into the system. And since bank one is not completely full, it's not going to completely fill up that tank, but I can slowly start transferring air from additional banks afterwards to get a more accurate fill. And once I get this one finished up, then we'll swap over and I'll show you how you can do multiple tanks at one time. All right guys, so now that you see how we fill a single cylinder, I'm going to show you how we do multiple cylinders at a time. And the cool thing about this compressor is I can do three tanks or three cylinders internally at a time, plus a fill whip. So I can fill up to four cylinders at a time, which makes a job like this a whole lot quicker. Um, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and open up the fill containment unit. And yes, that's actually what this is called, a fill containment unit. It kind of reminds me of the containment unit in the old Ghostbuster franchise. Um, you know, you open it up, you lock it, and... The trap or the light's green, the trap is clean. So it's kind of the same type thing here. So I have two cylinders that we're going to be working with. This first one should have a little bit over 2,000 PSI. This is one of the ones we used last night at the pool. So it's probably going to have just slightly over 2,000 PSI. And then this next one is a brand new cylinder that's going to be empty. There's not going to be any pressure in it whatsoever. So another benefit to doing this is the simple fact that it allows me to fill multiple cylinders by using the cylinders to actually equalize to fill the cylinders and then I can actually top them off with the cascade. So in short, I'm actually using a cylinder as a cascade system before I switch over to the cascade. But I'm going to hook up my fill whips real quick and I'll show you a closer view to this in just a second because I want to show you how much safer this is filling in this fashion than doing it with the external fill whip doing one at a time. So now that I've got the first fill whip, attached. I'm going to turn the tank on. It will show me here that this tank has approximately about 2,500 PSI in it. I'm going to hook up this next cylinder, which is the new one. I'm going to get it turned on and I can see that there is zero PSI in the cylinder. And if I show you a little bit closer look, one thing that makes this a whole lot safer are these big steel sleeves in here. These are about half inch to three quarter inch solid steel sleeves or tubes if you will. And then I've also got another three eighths inch of steel here. So when I shut this door, and I go to fill in the event that we have a tank rupture, it's going to protect me. Worst case scenario, might blow out my eardrum would be the most, which is bad, but it's a lot worse or it's a lot better than actually losing an arm or leg. Now what I can do before I even open up these fill banks is I want to equalize these two cylinders. We're going to start on fill station number two because it's the one that's the most empty. I'm actually going to open it up. You'll hear it start to pressurize with what the fill regulator is already set to. So it's going to go ahead and start to equalize that tank out. And then what also I can do is open fill station number one. And you'll notice this one goes up, but this one will start to come down. So it's going to equalize those two uh, cylinders out. Then I can come up here and I can actually do a very efficient fill on two cylinders at once. So I'm going to open this one up. And what's happening is it's taking air out of this tank. It's putting air into this tank and it's going to equalize those two cylinders. So when I do open up my, my cascade bottles up top, it'll fill those cylinders equally. Now I'm just going to go very, very slow with it. I should have around, give or take, about 1,200 in each cylinder by the time it equalizes itself out. Alright guys, as you can see, Fill station number one has about 1,200 PSI. Fill station number two has about 
1200 PSI. Now what I can actually do is come up here to the Cascade bottles and I can start juggling them. I'm going to go ahead and start on bank number one just like we did previously. And I'm going to turn it on. And the cool thing about using Cascades, I can really control the fill rate, which is a, a great thing to making sure I get the right pressure in the tanks that I need at the right speed. That way we don't have much pressure drop. But as you can see, both of these will be going up at the same time. Now I'm sitting at about 500 PSI in each one. This will drop. I'm going to say I should have around 1,700 in both of these tanks by the time that drops. And then I can switch over from uh, bank one or Cascade one over to bank two as well. So we'll get those cranked up just a little bit higher. And if you are a fill operator, this next part will make a lot of sense to you. Typically, the fill rate on a typical scuba cylinder is about six to 10 minutes. Uh, if you fill a lot of tanks, you can kind of hear it. As the air is traveling through the system, I can kind of tell what a six to 10 minute fill is just based off the airflow itself. But here we have just about equalized out. So you'll see I am in between, say, 16 and 1700 PSI in each one. Now I can shut down Cascade 1 and I can continue my fill using Cascade 2. All right, and these two are full, so we are going to cut the Cascade off. Uh, as you can see, I've got about 3,000 in this one, 3,000 in this one. And as I said, these smaller gauges don't always read quite as accurate. Uh, it looks like I've got about 32, but I promise you there's only about 3,000 in each cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. First thing I want to do, of course, is shut off the fill banks themselves. So I'll shut that one down, shut number one down. I can come over here and cut the cylinders off. Bleed it off. Then I'll shut this cylinder down. Bleed it off. Then I can remove my fill whips. And of course, remove the cylinders. And I can get it hooked to a two more and put it in here. Uh, I'm actually going to be filling these one at a time. I think it's a little bit quicker. Um, and I'm not too concerned about the tanks rupturing. But I think the time that I save by not having to physically handle each tank, picking it, picking it up, putting it in, it's a lot quicker just for me to do a fill whip on each of these. So I'm going to do a time lapse video showing you uh, just me filling these tanks real quick. I do have several different ones here. These are high pressure cylinders here, so they're 3442s. So what I actually have to do is change the fill pressure to 3442 versus 3000 on that. But I'm gonna knock all these out, show you a quick time lapse. This is something we do day in, day out. I'm gonna say on average, we fill anywhere between 10 to 20 tanks a day, whether we're selling them or we're using them for rental or just using them for our personal use. But yeah, I'm gonna get all these knocked out and then I'll give you some final thoughts on new tanks and filling them up as well. And there you go, guys. Got all the tanks out on the showroom floor. Got some that are still wrapped up, waiting on customers to come pick them up. But they have been visually inspected. They got stickers on them. They're full of air, and they are ready to go dive. Guys, if you got any questions on why shops do certain things, please drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. If you're interested in a tank inspection course, look up PCI and PSI. They're local here in North Carolina, but they'll travel all over the world, and they'll teach you how to do visual inspections. We actually did a video a while back, and I'll try to link it up here for you with Mark Gresham, the owner 
owner of it. He's a great instructor and he can uh, do a lot of things for you and your shop if you're wanting to do visual inspections. Maybe you're new to the industry or maybe you're looking for an inspection agency to where you can get certified to do visual inspections. They are definitely the ones to go through. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button for me. Definitely share it as well. If you got any questions on visual inspections, tanks, or just the retail side of the professional side of the industry, drop me a comment below and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.